They smoked a lot of weed, kidnapped Buckminster Fuller, staged the assassination of JFK, and built a house shaped like a penis for a feminist. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, spaceships, Cadillacs, dolphins, and occasionally architecture. This is the story of the psychedelic architecture of Ant Farm. The late 1960s and early 70s was defined by psychedelic pop music from bands like Pink Floyd, The Grateful Dead, and The Who. But there was also a corresponding psychedelic movement in architecture. Archigram in UK and Super Studio in Italy were experimental avant-garde collectives. Buckminster Fuller was teaching radical ideas that questioned the basic ideas of architecture. The whole Earth catalog showed do-it-yourself architecture. It was a highly creative time as architecture students were not content to just work for the man and instead redefine the role of the architect. Ant Farm Architects have external limitations placed on their creativity. Clients tell them what kind of buildings they want and how much money they have to spend. Well, one firm in San Francisco works the other way around. It starts with an idea, and then it looks for clients and money. Chip, Doug, and Curtis don't work like other architects. We don't wait for someone to come to us to hire us to design a building that has a program, but rather we try and generate or originate our own ideas. Ant Farm was an experimental architecture, graphic design, media design, and environmental design practice founded in San Francisco. They also did video, performance, and installation art. They held themselves up as visionaries and cultural critics. They used satire and lampooning to critique the mass consumption culture of the 1960s and 70s. Ant Farm was founded as an architecture and design collective in 1968 by architectural grads Doug Michaels and Chip Lord. They were joined by Curtis Schriever and Hudson Marquez and Douglas Herr and many others. The ants stood against the reductive mass architecture of modernism in the thoughtless suburban consumption machine. Architecture's rebellious youth refused to sign on to the project of capitalism and instead search for alternatives from 1960s pop culture. They sought to make an architectural equivalent to the psychedelic rock and roll of the time. Not only was music an inspiration, but also the rock group was seen as a model for architectural practice. The music writing process too became an inspiration for the architectural work process. Sleep late, do drugs, brainstorm, and then get to work riffing on them. Wake, bake, and create. They even took road trips like rock bands. If Archie Graham in England were the Beatles, then Ant Farm was the Beach Boys with their love of fast cars. 1967, the summer of love, San Francisco. In San Francisco, the free speech movement and anti-war demonstrations coalesced in 1967, the summer of love. This is where Ant Farm got together for the first time. 1967, the abduction of Buckminster Fuller. In 1967, Doug and Chip were teaching in the architectural department at the University of Houston. The engineering department had scheduled a lecture with Buckminster Fuller. They decided to kidnap him instead. They called the engineering department and pretended to be from Fuller's office and told them his flight had been canceled. He would be taking a later plane. Instead, they picked up Bucky in a rental Cadillac limo. They took him to see the Diamaxon car that was at the machine show at the time. Fuller didn't want to go, but they forced him anyway. The reason was 30 years previously, the car had gotten into a crash where a passenger had died and this destroyed the Diamaxon car as a viable product. Although Fuller didn't want to go, he actually loved seeing the car again after 30 years. Keep on trucking. Media Van, 1970. In 1970, the farmers created a media van and set out on a tour of colleges demonstrating their inflatables. Inflatables, 1971. Inflato Cookbook, 1971. 
Inflatables, pneumatic structures they called pillows, were sculpture, performance art, and environmental design all at the same time. They seemed to use advanced technology, using their media van to power the air pumps. Their inflatable structures were easy and cheap to build and showed their opposition to the mainstream, brutalist architecture of the 60s. Aligning with Buckminster Fuller, who asked, how much does your building weigh? The inflatables weighed almost nothing. Architects like Archigram and Ant Farm were trying to create a nomadic architecture that could be easily transported, or in Archigram's case, whole cities that could float away. Clean Air Pod, 1970. The performance took place on the University of California at Berkeley. Supposedly to warn students of air pollution, men in gas masks directed people to take shelter in the inflatable. Everyone was invited to partake in the performance, eliminating the line between artist and spectator. Architecture. Antioch Art Building, 1971. Ant Farm completed several successful architectural commissions, including the Newman Media Studio, Pool House Remodel, the Antioch Art Building, and the House of the Century. House of the Century, 1972. The House of the Century was their most complete architectural work. Designed for a feminist patron of the arts, it was to function as a weekend getaway house for her. Ironically, the house was shaped like a giant penis, perhaps a play on Freud's concept of penis envy, where he theorized that women envy men's penises because they don't have one. But the house was also shaped like the tail fin to a car, and also Ant Farm's previous inflatable work. The house is destroyed now, damaged by flooding. It didn't last a century as anticipated. Ant Farm's 1974 Cadillac Ranch along Route 66 is one of the best known public artworks in America. It is like Stonehenge if druids drove across America, took magic mushrooms, and got lost in Texas. It is the best example of psychedelic art in America. Media Burn, 1975. Deconstructing media through art. In 1975, Ant Farm, dressed as astronauts, got into the Phantom Dream Car, a customized Cadillac complete with media fin and video equipment and drove full speed through a pyramid of flaming TVs. Are you worried about your chances for survival? Um, I'm more worried about America's chances for survival than, than my own personal chances for survival. Television arose as a system of social discipline, discouraging behavior by promoting passivity. Ant Farm challenged that by making a mass media event themselves. They took back the medium through the staging of an art performance. The Eternal Frame, 1975. Less than a month after the media burn event, Ant Farm headed to Dallas to take on the most important image of the 20th century, the death of John F. Kennedy. Here they staged the assassination of JFK to show how real experience and memory are replaced with a mass media version. The Kennedy assassination was so powerful as an image that it set the course of mass media being the ultimate spectacle. More real than reality, the image becomes untethered from actual experience to become its own product, something far more powerful than the actual event. Mass media in this way creates an eternal frame by which we observe the world. We can never escape this unreal world, but Ant Farm showed us that we can at least lampoon it. Ant Farm disbanded in 1978 after a fire in their studio at Pier 40 in San Francisco destroyed most of their work. Like a band breakup, they never worked together again. Let's take a look into the future. The year is 2025. This is Blue Star, a think tank in space. Blue Star looks something like a space donut. In the donut hole, 
a huge sphere of water. And in the water, a supercomputer and a population of dolphins. The dolphins are there to program the computer acoustically with ultrasonic sound waves from their sophisticated sonar systems. Dolphins in space? Star Trek meets Flipper? Who dreams up such things? And where do they get their ideas? Design. Since that time, new technologies have arisen to make Blue Star a reality. For example, acoustic levitation was invented by Taylor Wang, a scientist at the Jet Propulsion Lab. Uh, current experiments on the shuttle use acoustic levitation to manipulate water spheres. In space, sonar guns aimed at the water sphere are able to manipulate the shape and position and frequency of the water sphere. It's a very important technology. What can we learn from the ant farm? There is so much more that can be done with architecture than just designing boring buildings. As environmental designers, you can design lived experiences. If you start with a concept and not an object, it liberates you to do just about anything. You could do video, performance, and installation art. You could be a visionary and cultural commentator. But most of all, Ant Farm teaches us to be adventurous and never stop experimenting. Ant Farm understood that an art object is nothing without its performative aura. It wasn't enough to make an object, you had to perform and create an experience to express its significance. The performance and the media documenting the performance is what framed a work of art, making it culturally relevant. This is an important concept most architects don't get. It's not enough to create buildings and environments. To be culturally relevant, you must communicate their relevance to a wider audience through mass media. And this means making an experience, not just an object. Who today experiments in conceptual environments, guerrilla news, and interdisciplinary collaborations? Customization is the ultimate technique of cultural appropriation. And we can see people like Tom Sachs and the Neistat brothers use the same technique in their work. Tom Sachs's sculpture and performance art is in a very similar vein to Ant Farm especially his NASA exhibit, where he copies the Space Cowboy exhibit from Ant Farm. This is where Casey Neistat and Van Neistat got their start. The experimental nature of their work is a direct influence from Ant Farm. In this way, Ant Farm is the precursor to YouTube as do-it-yourself media creators. What Ant Farm shows is that architecture can be used as a countercultural movement while also being part of the mainstream. Where Ant Farm focuses on the car and TV set, maybe a new generation of designers could focus on video games and YouTube. In this way, architecture can be transformative. I think the main takeaway from Ant Farm is to never stop experimenting and focus on the experience over the object. Starting with a concept, they walk the fine line between practical and impossible to push boundaries of what architecture is. As the social irrelevance of architecture forces architects to retreat into formalism, think Frank Gehry, or theorizing, think Rem Koolhaas, or giving in to the capitalist machine, think Norman Foster, the idea of an architectural practice motivated by the transformative effect conceptual art has on society is a breath of fresh air. This is why Ant Farm is relevant and worth remembering today. I'm Jamie Roberts. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below.